This tutorial was brought to you thanks to the supporters on the screen. Check out tapgiles.com to find more Dreams resources, donate to support my work, or engage my services to get private instruction or help on a project one on one. So far in this series, I've shown how to make puppets that follow their own patrolling paths in a cheap and efficient way. Check the description for those videos. Now I'll teach how to interrupt that patrolling behaviour to chase the player as spotted. So we have a chip for patrolling. Now let's have one for chasing the player. So first we need a player to chase. So let's have... What I'll do is have the little sliding puppet because I feel like that would be cute slash hilarious. And don't need that or that. Sliding behaviour. Um, so we'll need a a tag in the um, on the puppet that they can kind of look towards and things. So we're, we're going to use a laser scope to see if the character can actually have line of sight to the player. So we want it to be able to hit a sculpt. So you can't just put a tag in here because uh, let's just give this a name. So this is the player. Um, and then if we have a laser scope looking towards the tag called player, it will be looking down into the ground. So it will probably, it, uh, we want to know if it actually hits the player. So we need that tag to be on the player. Uh, another thing to th be aware of with that is the uh, jump animations and stuff could be like moving the character or maybe the player is um, tilting the controller so it's like moving like that. So we need the tag to really be on one of these sculpts to make sure it hits. So we'll move this out and slap it to his face or we'll actually scope it in and I'll use the grid and then put that dot in the center of the head. So now it's always targeting within a sculpt, inside a sculpt. So we want to be able to detect if we're hitting that or if we're just hitting a wall, we don't want to, um, we don't want to care about anything. So if I make, for example, a quick other sculpt that could be in the way. So this is still finding it through the wall because it's uh, got this x-ray mode and it's got all the the um, labels on including unlabeled. So this doesn't have any labels turned on so it's counted as unlabeled. So then it hits the wall and then finds um, counts that as a hit and we don't want it to count as a hit. We want it to only count the player as being a hit. So if we give that a specific label like friend, it's already got that. And then we'll turn off the other ones so it doesn't care unless it only hits friend. And we don't want it to x-ray either. So right now we've got x-ray on and it's going through that sculpt and then hitting the friend sculpt of the head. Um, so we want to turn off x-ray mode and now it has to have nothing in the way uh, before it gets to the a sculpt with this particular label on it. So if the laser scope, if they like walk around the corner, now they see it and you can see on the face of the laser scope it's gone black, which means it's hit something. And then you go down here and now it hasn't hit something. So we can now use a laser scope to figure out if these puppets can see the head of the player. One other feature I'd like to add though is if the player, so if we if we just make a fake head with a nose and this is kind of representing it's uh, where it can see right so if these are grouped up then because it's not behind a wall, now it can see it. And if we go behind a wall, now it can't see it. But also, if the the this character was facing the opposite direction, you don't want it to, to be able to see it. If this was above the head or something, then it would still make it to here. So we could just stick it on the front of the head, but um, to have a little more control, 
what we can do is have an invisible um, like shield. So let's use the grid. And the way I did this before, to have a sphere and then cut out another sphere from the front of it. And now we can put this, uh, we'll just put this here and then move the gizmo source thing into the center of this object. So now I can like make this quite small and over the top of the head. And if we, uh, if you watch this hit something, then uh, if it's looking from behind it, if the player is behind it, then it won't find it. And if it's in front, then it will find it because it's kind of cut off by this, um, this sculpt here. And we can adjust the how 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 much peripheral vision it has. So if you want to be able to see it from here, we can move this forwards. So if we go in here, use precise move to move it forwards a bit. Now it will be able to see it from um, a wider viewing angle. So now, uh, yeah, so you can kind of fiddle with that um, more easily if you have this kind of hidden shield for the um, the laser scope and you can also make this this thing um, as small as you like so if I just make it really tiny and you don't have to do this I'm just demonstrating that it kind of lets you adjust it with more freedom oh it's just too short now so it still works the same with the same kind of viewing angles but now it's really tiny and of course then you can just make it invisible so if you make that invisible non-collidable and make sure on the laser scope we say that it doesn't matter if it's collidable or non-collidable or visible or invisible it will still uh, affect the outcome of whether it hits or not so uh yeah so we'll, we'll use that let's use the large version like that, and we'll put it in our character so i'll just put it in the head which has some advantages so um, because it's now in the head, you can animate it. You can have it ha um, like stop at the corner and then do like a looking looking around with the head. And this this whole rig, this this checking to see if it can see the player, will work as well. So like animating it, looking around and stuff, that will affect gameplay because it's actually inside the attached to the head object. Cool. So uh, now we just want to have that as an input. So if we turn off preview invisibility, we can see this uh, this laser scope again. And we want that to come into this logic so we can use it in here. So we'll have a node and wire that in like that. And we can turn preview invisibility on. So now let's just use this. So this is going to light up while it's receiving a hit something from the laser scope. So if I put this guy over here, let's turn off that. That's better. Right. So we're going to patrol round and hopefully it will start to detect it. No. So what's going on? And to hide so that I can see all the logic and stuff with uh, preview and visibility off, but I don't get this stuff in the way. I'm going to use the hide tool and use R2 on this object and it becomes yellow, a circle to come out of it, and now it's hidden for in edit mode. Even if you have preview and visibility off, distance, the distance is the problem. So we need to be able to see from, um, like if you're at one end of the corridor, be able to see the other end of the corridor. So I'll just make this nice and big. Uh, yeah, so if you pin this to the screen, that should be black while it can see the player. And now it can't see the player because it's past it. Cool, so it's past the uh, character, and now it can't see it. And then when it actually comes round to the other side again, we'll be able to see it again. So as soon as it turned that corner, it could see it, and then it'll go into like a chase mode. So if we put this character even in here, we can check the, the kind of sight lines and see if we're happy with that. Yeah, I think that's okay. And as I say, you can adjust it quite easily. Right, so now we want 
uh, two modes. One is when we're chasing and one where, where we're patrolling and patrolling will be on burst mode. So we'll put that on A and this will also kind of trigger this thing here as well, which will um, which will put it into the wanting to um, find the next destination mode. So, so that it, when we put it into the patrolling mode, it will try to recalculate to get to the next part. Oh, actually, we can just. So I'm powering this timeline with a switch, which means when this microchip gets turned on, uh, because this is in once mode, it will play through and set it up to be the correct settings for this selector. So um, when we detect the player though, we'll go into B mode. So let's see that working. So we're in patrol mode and now we're in B mode because we can see the player. So what do we want to do in B mode? We want to turn to, towards the player first. So I'll just put that in here so that we're only doing the rocket rotator while we're, we're just following a path. And then we'll have another chip for for when we're chasing. So when we're chasing, we will look towards the player. Uh, so I'm going to set the player to be force possession, just so it's easier for testing. And this will look at the face of the player like that. So. Um, We'll turn these things up again and use the player tag. And that will only be powered while we're in the in that mode. So we're going to patrol round and then look towards the player. Like that. Oh, we need to adjust the, the direction. So I'll just adjust the, the arrow so it's pointing forwards. And then when it comes around the corner, it looks towards the player. But I'm thinking we might adjust it. So if I try this while playing, and then this goes into, I've seen the player mode. It's trying to look towards the player, even though the player is through walls and stuff, which doesn't really make any sense. So we want to know if we can still see the player. So if we have another node going through here, this will be um, if if we can still see the player from where we currently are, then we'll rotate or then we'll um, have a rotation speed. Otherwise, we'll slow down because of the damping and this, this will become zero when we can't see the player. I'll go into test mode, which means I can play the game and see the gadgets. Right, so it's spotted us and come around and now now it can't see us. So the rotation speed has become zero but the um, but the damping and stuff still works because that gadget is still on so it won't keep rotating on the spot or something so if I run over here uh, then it spotted me again because I've come out from behind the wall so that's cool so we also want to move towards the player so let's have um, a follower and we'll have normally you have uh, zero uh, minimum distance so that you go all the way to the target location but in this case we want to just go to near the player so if you do that then it will follow until it gets to that point like that far away and then it will stop running um, so let's have high strength damping have that on player cool but again if we if they stop seeing the player they'll stop running towards us so so now they're following um, and we want to be able to outrun them so I'll just adjust this to give us some more speed let's actually give it a bit more a bit more nuance to it so when it loses track of us, then it will um, take a little bit of time before it stops following and stuff. So if we have like a timeline, uh, yeah, so when it spots us, then it will rewind the timeline. 
So I'll just put these on the timeline. So when they when we're first spotted, and I'll put the playback speed to zero. So when we're first spotted, uh, this timeline will turn on and be reset to the start, and it will just sit there. Um, and then when we're not spotted, we want it to start playing, so that then after a couple of seconds it will move past here. So let's go and get a not gate. So while we're not seeing the player, then we'll set the playback speed and use L1 and X to put this into modulate mode so that this will be sending a 1 because um, because it can't see us, it will be sending a 1 and then it will be 1 times 79% or 100% and now we can set these to be quite short and it will um, have to not see us for this amount of time before it stops doing stuff so you could actually have it uh, keep looking towards our location for a bit longer and maybe stop moving quicker something like that so let's see how that affects the timeline and go into play mode cool so let's reset and then when we go out of range and after some time it stops trying to follow oh now it's staring at a wall over here I think it's because we're so low actually um, I'll move the uh, this rig to the front more and probably angle it down a bit more because the problem is it's uh, when we're right in front of it, it's looking straight down um, and clipping through the um, through that sculpt. So if we do it like that, that should help. And if we shove it a bit, let's just see what's going on there. So it's finding us, but uh, oh, the timeline um, played all the way out, which is the problem. So if we um, uh, if a timeline doesn't have something wired in powering it, then when it gets to the end, it will automatically turn itself off unless it's uh, looping. So if we just stick a switch to power it, then it should stay on even when it gets to the end, and then we'll be able to reset it and things. Okay. Okay, so it's got to the end, and now we should be able to get its attention again. Yeah, there we go. So it's working okay now. Um, and you can like adjust these. So maybe you want the um, once we get past a shorter amount of time, then this the uh, the speed goes to zero. It's taking forever. Um, but the damping stays high and make sure it doesn't keep uh, spinning on the spot for some reason. And then we can like fade that in so over time it'll um, slowly stop trying to look at us. That is kind of hard to keep an eye on this guy. Let's use a camera and just put it overhead and then we can see everything that's going on right so we get the attention and then move out of the way and it kind of followed us with its head for a little bit but then it stopped whoa <laughs> so we want to uh, also change back to patrolling mode after like sometime over here so let's do let's add a switch so um, if we haven't been spotted for four seconds then we'll go back to patrolling mode so uh, now I'll run out of the way and it will go back to patrolling mode after a few seconds and go back straight to, to its patrol that's just it's just for easier testing for um, when it can't see us we'll have a toggle in here toggling whether we're visible to it or not 
So if we have a selector, then we can press triangle to uh, into the next output. So this is another way of changing which active um, which channel is active in a selector, telling it to go to the next one. So it will kind of go to the next one B and then C and then D. And then if it's on D, it will wrap around to A. So if this only has two, then it will kind of bounce between A and B. So I'll use a keyframe to just turn off the friend label. And maybe to help us visualize what's going on, I'll just tint these black like it's gone ninja mode. And that will happen on the B um, channel. So as I press um, triangle, if I do this in uh, test mode, when I press triangle, it will toggle onto invisible mode or not invisible mode. So if I go non -in go invisible mode, now it can't see us. If I go visible mode, now it can see us. So that will be useful for testing. So it can see us, it's following, and then we can just leave it here by going invisible. But now it doesn't know what to do when it's trying to find a position. So it's doing that thing where it's walking diagonally over to the uh, the center of the scene, which is on the zero, zero, zero position. And it's trying to walk there because it didn't find anything, any destination. So over here, we need to give it um, a way of getting back to its patrol area. So, which basically just means um, adding more of these waypoints. So we'll have a waypoint there and a waypoint there. So that if um, the character is here, we can tell it to go to this waypoint and then it will check again and then it will go onto its normal, normal patrol habits. But you have to be aware of how the keyframes, what the keyframes are happening. So that patrol is now um, also affecting this new trigger zone, which in this case is fine. But if you wanted to add it um, for this other patrol uh, route, then uh, you'd have to like remove it um, from this patrol route, for example. So when you kind of make these structural changes to how the pathing will work, just make sure the um, each of those keyframes is only powering on the trigger zones that you actually need. Yeah, so now let's try that again. So get its attention. Move in here, go invisible. Run away. And now it knows to get how to get back to its own patrol route. Uh, let's get its attention again. If we leave it up this end, it'll still do the same thing. But you could have um, like a trigger zone for this side and it'll go to this end, or that side and it'll go to that end, stuff like that. So the best thing to do is kind of have these waypoints and trigger zones all around the place. And you can always add trigger zones when you need them, when you need to like have Maybe you've got this trigger zone here that will affect this whole route. But for a particular route, that kind of messes stuff up. So then you have another trigger zone that only looks for like from here onwards or something. And all that's fine. The, the, the cool thing about this is, for one thing, it's looking for tags, which is a lot easier for the computer to, to do than looking for actual possessed objects or uh, sculpts or whatever. So um, that's quite efficient. It also, because it's only checking when it needs to, for a very brief period of time, the trigger zones are on for, for like re very rarely, uh, instead of being on all the time. And also they all share this, all this setup. So it's very easy to make new patrol patterns and it makes it kind of cheaper on Thermo but the, rather than having a, having a set of patrol patterns for each character. And goes up back to my previous one, which has four characters patrolling. And I'll show you it in analytics mode. So at each corner, um, they check, they do all that trigger zone stuff. So it's like 
no gameplay cost. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something new. Go to patreon.com slash tapgiles to get 5 hours of tutorials early for $3. Here's a preview of what you can learn if you choose to become a supporter.